I do believe that Officer Colella was in talks with uh, Principal Busey about moving at least the West Peabody buses over to the side of the building between um, that side entrance, between them and the field. That way they could go straight out the back side to, um, to King Street and out that way, eliminating a lot of the traffic jams at the bottom of the hill. But I don't believe it encompasses all of the buses. I believe the, the uh, majority of the buses for downtown and South Peabody would still stay in the front parking lot. Thank you. You're welcome. I, I agree with Councilor Turco. I mean, anything that's going to make the, the students at drop-off and at pickup safer at the Higgins, I'm all for. So, and in order to do that, there needs to be some bite behind the ordinances that we're going to create. So, um, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other councilors? Um, I, my only comment is I have a child who also goes to the Higgins, and I'm familiar with what's going on. I've seen it on social media. So the parents who actually follow the rules are get very upset, and at some point, uh, if it's not rectified, you might get some mothers getting out of their cars going at it. So I think it's a good ordinance. I'm going to support it. Um, any other comments before we close the public hearing? We're going to take a vote. Uh, City Clerk will read the proposed ordinance and we'll take a vote in the, of the committee. The Code of the City of Peabody adopted on January 9, 1986 and amended is hereby further amended as follows. That section 19-36 entitled Driving Through Safety Zones Prohibited of the Code of the City of Peabody, Massachusetts is hereby amended by deleting the following language. It shall be unlawful for, a dr for the driver of a vehicle, except on a signal from police officer, to drive the same over or through a safety zone, and inserting in place thereof the following. It shall be unlawful for the driver of any vehicle, except on signal from a police officer, or in accordance with posted regulations, to drive over the same through safety zone. B, a violation shall be punishable by a fine in accordance with the following schedule. First offense of a calendar year, $50. Second offense in a calendar year, $100. Third offense in a calendar year, $150. Section 2, all ordinances are part of ordinances inconsistent herewith are hereby repealed. Section 3, this ordinance shall take effect as provided by law. Roll call vote in the ordinance. Councilors Gould. Yes. In Manning Martin. Yes. Turco. Yes. Melville. Yes. Sasla. Yes. Motion carries five nothing. Next item on the agenda, item B. Letter from Frank Puglio regarding 394 Lowell Street, regarding the Lowell Street speed limit. I think you've all received the letter in your packet, had a chance to review it. Uh, I'm going to give Mr. Poyo an opportunity to come up and address the council, and then we'll hear from uh, Sergeant Harkins. State your name. My name is Frank Apulio. I'm, I'm on behalf of my son. Couldn't be here today. Was was working, and uh, he asked me to come over. He said we would like to see the speed limit lower down because he's on a 35 miles an hour uh, speed zone, and it makes it hard for anybody to try to get in the house, the, the driveway, or come out of the driveway without getting hit. You know, uh, the cars travel from uh, a speed limit of 40, 45 miles an hour at all times. So we figure if we bring it down to 25 miles an hour, maybe it'll reach 30, 35 miles an hour, because it makes it very dangerous to get into the driveway or come out of it. It takes at least 15 minutes to try to get out of it, the driveway. And uh, as a matter of fact, about four months ago, they took six post fans uh, is a uh, is driveway, so and it's uh, also one of the neighbor here. Yes, just state your name and address for the record. Uh, good, good afternoon uh, or good evening. My name is Brian Allen. I live at 395 Lowell Street, right across the street. Um, so I've witnessed. Uh, I've lived here for five years, and uh, I've witnessed a number of uh, accidents, or you know, heard them out front of our home. Um, the speed limit, I think, is a, is a big factor in why we have so many problems. I, w I happen to be home the day of the, uh, the accident that uh, Mr. Coelho is talking about. Um, 
I'm, I'm, we're lucky that there was something there to stop at the, or he would have went into someone's home. It's constant, uh, like, dragway. And if, you, if you're coming from Su Chang's on Lowell Street, and right as you come around the bend, it's like people are hitting the gas pedal and just shooting down. It's ridiculous. I, I went, uh, went out uh, to conduct some business this afternoon, and as I'm walking out to my car, I look, and the same thing. You just see cars coming, they hit that, hit that bend, and they light it up. I mean, it's, it's dangerous. Uh, two or three years ago, I, the, the neighbors uh, next door to them, a school bus has stopped. And thankfully, this person that's coming just way too fast had to slam on the brakes to keep from hitting a little boy that was crossing the street. You know, and I mean, it was, it was ridiculous. Um, you know, and again, uh, to go along with the, you know, anything we can do to, you know, protect our kids, but the speed limit, I think, even though it's 35, I think it still needs to be dropped down. It's just, it's, it's just for safety's sake. Thank you. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Anybody else with the public would like to speak? At this point, I'm going to ask uh, Sergeant Hawkins to come forward. I know he has some information that he'd like to share. Uh, good evening again. Um, this one here, the captain asked me to speak about um, the way the speed study was done there, um, or the way the speed limit was set there. It's actually posted for 35, but by state regulation, the speed study that we had, it's actually supposed to be 40. Um, and the problem with doing a speed study again to decrease that speed limit because we don't have the authority to arbitrarily change that once the speed study is done we would have to go through an exorbitant cost at our our expense to have mass dot come in and actually conduct a second speed study um, they would do the entire length of lowell street from the square all the way to the linfield line um, at, a, at a significant cost but given our history with speed studies they go with the 85th percentile of the speed and we would probably most likely see the speed either stay the same or go up in that section of the street based on the cars. My recommendation would be better enforcement um, because we can drop the speed limit down to 10, but that's not going to stop the outliers that are going 50 to 60 anyways. Um, the only way you stop them is to get out there and start writing some tickets. Um, and I know that Lowell Street's always an issue. I wasn't really aware of that when I knew about the accident. I, actually, my uh, an officer that works for me did the accident report, so I reviewed that this morning again. Um, doesn't indicate anything in there about speed, but when I spoke to him, he did say that he suspected it might have had something to do with speed, he just couldn't prove it. Um, but that seemed more to be an aggressive driver um, because he had hit the car a couple of times already um, before he lost control and, and went off the road. Um, my recommendation would be we do have the mobile trailer that does a speed measurement. I drove through there today, I found a couple of spots we could possibly put it, uh, put that up there to educate the public to slow down, um, as well as we're gonna go through and, and make sure that the signs are proper. I'm not saying I'm going to recommend putting a 40 mile an hour sign in replace of the 35. We can't technically enforce the 35, but I don't have a problem with leaving it there to, to help slow cars down. Um, but through heavy enforcement and education, I think that would accomplish pretty much the same thing we're trying to accomplish by dropping the speed limit. And again, I'm not convinced that, that going through a speed study would actually accomplish what we want. It may do exactly the opposite. Um, so I, I'd like to at least try to, to handle it through enforcement and education before we, we risk potentially doing just the opposite of what we're trying to accomplish. Thank you, officer. Uh, members of the committee, uh, Council Manning Martin. Thank you, and thank you, Sergeant Hawkins, uh, for your assessment. It's very thorough. You already answered all the questions I had with respect to the speed study, and obviously it's an enforcement, enforcement issue anywhere in the city. So if this has been brought to your attention, I'm sure then that the police will, will uh, address it and work on enforcement. I did have one question though, you, and you reviewed the incident that was mentioned in the gentleman's letter, the accident. Was that person charged? They were charged with, uh, let me see, unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. Um, and then a second operator who arrived to pick them up was also charged with revoked uh, operation after revocation and allowing the unlicensed operator. Well, okay, there's some good enforcement there, so they shouldn't even have been on the road. So, uh, thank you very much, and um, I'm going to defer to the sergeant's um, recommendations. Thank you. Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you to Sergeant Hawkins. I did talk to Captain Richards earlier today, and, and you may have said this and I didn't hear it, but 
I believe he said he pulled it ac accident reports from that area for the last three years, and this was the only accident that he came across um, in that three-year period. I don't know if you, you can attest to that, or if, uh, but uh, if, unless I misheard him, um, he did tell me that it was one, uh, one accident in a three-year period um, in that direct area. So secondly, the, the thing that concerned me, and this is to, to Mr. Allen and um, Mr. Puglio, only because I've had five or six of these requests come before me um, in Ward 1, I, I, I just want people to know that we, we're not ignoring their request. We'd, we'd like to help with the situation, but there are speed studies required through the state, and I, I know I'm just reiterating what, uh, what Sergeant Harkin said, but I, I do want people to understand that it's not an arbitrary thing that we can do and we can just randomly change speed limits. It does have to go for a speed study. Quite often, more, more often than not, those speed studies have a, a, a detrimental effect where uh, the average speed is, is adjusted upward rather than um, to its original uh, purpose and to go downward. So we do understand um, in the cases that you've helped me in the past, Sergeant Hawkins, um, with certain streets in Ward 1, the enforcement has been great after the fact um, when it was brought to your attention, and I'm confident that you guys will address uh, Lowell Street. So again, I, I would defer to your recommendation and um, keep the speed limit the same and, and not uh, continue with the speed study at this point. But I, I would like to ask that you do get that speed reader board out there as soon as possible and, and um, maybe that will help with the situation. Thank you. Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you to Sergeant Hawkins. Thank you, Sarge, for, for your effort. Uh, can you tell me what um, why it needs to have a speed study. Does every change in speed limit have to have a state speed study, or is it an intersection with a highway, or what, what is the criteria? Um, I don't have an exact answer for that, but I'll give you what my best understanding is, um, and I apologize if I might be misspeaking here. Um, it is my understanding that in order to change a speed limit, if there's already a speed study done on the street, it doesn't fall under the, the law we adopted last year where everything drops to 25. Because there was already a speed study done on that street, that supersedes that. Um, if we didn't have any speed studies at all, then every street in Peabody that falls under a thickly settled area or um, business district would automatically be 25. But once the speed limit's set by, by the state, we have to go through them to change it. Um, and to answer your question, um, Captain Richards did state that that was the only accident in that general area, um, but there were a handful at the Sioux Chang's intersection. You, thank you for the clarification. Uh, maybe it's just I'm getting old, but um, I'm all for 25 miles an hour everywhere in the city, to be honest with you. I, I think that these poor folks struggle to live on a major, major street, and I, I wish there was some way to assist in that, but I think that the, the one way we can help is through enforcement. Um, is there anything you need from us to enhance that enforcement? Do we need to ask the chief, uh, are we asking right now, and you'll see what you can do to handle that. I will uh, put out the email when I get out of here to the other shifts. I will instruct my traffic units to spend as much time as they can there, um, and hopefully the other shifts can do it as well, because I know it's not just an eight to four problem. Um, it may not be 24 hours a day every day, but we'll get as many guys out there enforcing as we can, and um, hopefully a couple of, couple of written tickets will get the message out there. Um, we'll also maybe put it on social media that we'll be out there in effect, you know, enforcing speed limits up and down Lowell Street, and hopefully that'll, that'll deter people altogether, because I'd rather them not speed than speed and get a ticket, because that didn't accomplish anything. But Thank you. Unfortunately, well, folks, you understand the predicament. Okay. Thank you, Councillor. And I just echo, uh, being what's in Ward 5, I echo the comments of my previous council. I think this, I know the speed reader board really does help out when you drive by it and people realize how fast they're going. Um, it, it does make an impact as we put the six up, the six across the city that I know have been very helpful. So I assume you could do that, Sergeant Hawkins. I'd appreciate that. And I think that the uh, neighbors would see people uh, take aware of that sign and also um, every now and then put a car out there. That'd be great too. Thank you very much. Any other further questions from the councils? Okay, there being none, item C. Request by Terma and Elias Realty Group, 3, 5, and 7 Central Street, regarding turning portion of North Central, regarding turning portion of North Central Street into a two-way street. 
Uh, Councillor Kelty. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. My name is John Kelty. I'm an attorney. I have offices at 40 Lowell Street in Peabody, Mass. And on May 10th, I submitted a letter to the City Council uh, requesting that a portion of, uh, of North Central Street be uh, converted to two-way. I've supplied you with uh, plans uh, that depict the current condition. It's an aerial shot um, that uh, outlines my client's property. <clears throat> we have obtained a variance from the City of Peabody Zoning Board of Appeals, and um, we have uh, a condition that says that in order for us to develop the property, we've got a um, petition for and hopefully receive uh, the uh, authority to, or for the city to convert a section of North Central Street, which is currently one way entering only um, into two-way traffic, but that that could conceivably end uh, right at our driveway. This would result in a, a reduction in the number of cur curb cuts that are out on 114, and it would, re uh, it would allow cars to exit this particular property and turn right to exit uh, from North Central Street directly on to Pulaski. Uh, the other alternative might be, if the city were to consider it and think this was better, would be to turn it two way into from Pound Lane all the way out to Pulaski Street. Um, we felt when I, I had uh, been on site um, with then uh, Karen Sawyer, Dave Terenzoni, Captain Scott Richards, we had our traffic. Uh, uh, analysis uh, person and the thinking at the time was that it should probably only be from our driveway so that you could exit onto Pulaski Street go left or right exiting our place but not necessarily encourage the pound lane uh, where people cut through up to Pulaski Street and Margin Street uh, not allowing the right hand turn from pound lane into North Central but that would be the discretion of the uh, city and the police department recommendation. But at the time that we were meeting, uh, we were able to see that uh, Coca-Cola trucks and some of the larger trucks, uh, they come out Pulaski Street, I'm sorry, they come out uh, North Central Street on a regular basis because um, some of the other areas trying to get a large Coca-Cola truck onto Pound Lane just doesn't function very well. So with that, I would uh, request that uh, the council adopt um, the measure, um, determine which, uh, which portions of the street you would like to see two-way. I did do a little research and found that uh, this was made one way by uh, Councillor Mary Wozlachuk. I was in communication with her. She couldn't really remember uh, exactly why it happened. and. Um, she uh, told me that she had been asked by then public services person uh, Kevin Marston to uh, to make it one way, but I couldn't find out what the what the uh, initiative if, uh, for that was. Did you get color? No. I thought I had color. No. If you would like to. The color version uh, illuminates a little better um, what I'm talking about. Council, just clarification. We, in our packet, we have two photos. Can you yeah. check each other? No. Is the first photo is the way it is today, and the second photo is the, the construction of the two new buildings, is that correct? Yeah. And this change would happen after the um, buildings were erected, or this would happen before the buildings, new buildings would be erected? Probably before. Okay. I know that uh, the police uh, 
had some uh, comments they'd like to uh, make regarding the request. Sergeant Harkins. Um, after speaking with Captain Richards and, and driving down there and taking a look at the, the layout of, of what they're projecting, their building looks like and all that, um, we're in support of, of this, providing that North Central Street is only going to be a two-way road up to the end of their, the end of their driveway, um, because we don't want to encourage people from Palm Lane coming down Palm Lane to then turn right onto, onto North Central. Um, essentially keeping it one way from the very end of that arrow pointing in so that it allow everybody to come out, take a right or a left if they chose and then it access Pulaski Street um, from the end of North Central Street. Um, that's about all we have other than uh, I believe you addressed it right in and right only as they're coming in and out of uh, 114. We don't want anyone crossing Andover Street tying up the entire westbound lane as they're trying to take a left. Google. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you to Attorney Kelty and Sergeant Hawkins, um, I couldn't disagree more about Pound Lane being a two-way, Jack. You did say that you recommended possibly having Pound Lane be a two-way. No, 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 no. Oh, I, I misunderstood you. What I was trying to say was that it would not need to necessarily be two-way um, all the way to Pound Lane. North Central could stop at our driveway. Okay. No, there's no change to Pound Lane whatsoever. Okay, Pound Lane stays the same. Left turn, uh, when you come out, Sergeant Hawkins, when you come out North Central Street, the two way now, because right now it's only a one way. When you come out, right turn only? Coming out onto North Central, you could go right or left. Coming out onto 114. Onto, onto Pulaski, sorry. Um, on to Pulaski at the end of North Central, proposed change. Uh, you're, you're proposing, Jack, that you allowed to take a left turn on to Pulaski? Uh, using Pound Lane to get up that way. So to be right turn only exiting North Central. Okay. Exiting North Central on to Pulaski, right turn only. Yes. Okay. You okay with that? Yes, I didn't know that was even an option, but that, that makes perfect sense to me to keep everybody leaving the parking lot, taking a right. So if they wanted Pulaski Street, they'd be able to go up Pound Lane to get to Pulaski, yes. Councilor, uh, Councilor Masoulis isn't here, and I'm sure there's some, uh, some questions that, uh, I know, Jack, you and I and Councilor Matsoulis did a number of on site or a few on, a couple on sites anyway prior to on the, on the yes he was original proposal uh, emailed a copy of this package okay further at this moment council Coun council melville through you mr chairman to uh i either to, uh, attorney kelty are you also pro i mean are you, so you're pro essentially you're proposing that there be a, uh, it, it would only be two ways from the driveway that you're coming off of Pulaski onto North Central, and it would be marked that way, that, you know, obviously no left turn coming out of the driveway, and then going out on, can you shut off your microphone because sound, thank you. And then um, when you come out to Pulaski, would you, in, in, I, 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 I essentially don't think we want to have people taking a left turn out of that North Central Street onto Pulaski. Um, what do we, yeah, what, how do we plan on addressing that? Is that going to just be, because essentially you'd have to have a sign on the other side saying no left turn. Somebody coming out of that driveway coming on here, if the sign is on the sidewalk, I, I just, we're seeing that right now if you look at Summit Street. If you people coming out of the CVS on Summit Street where they have the, the, the main drag, it's not, you're not supposed to be able to take a left turn there. I, can, I mean, I see it all the time. It's mostly because people don't see the no left turn sign um, because already it, the way they're coming out. So is there any plan to address that issue? Or um, I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Yeah. 
provide the striping and signage. We'd pay for the signage and we got to buy it through the city. But your qu question was, how would we prevent the uh, traffic from crossing Pulaski Street to get a signage, I think is the only. So essentially, you just, I would just ask that, again, yeah, uh, through the chair to Attorney Kelty. So you, but where, where exactly, are, and maybe this could be the police, where exactly are we planning on putting that signage? That's my only, you know, I talked to a couple of the neighbors and they were, they didn't have necessarily an issue with this, but they just wanted to make sure that, um, you know, when they're coming down Pulaski or if they're coming out of their house on Pulaski Street that the backups aren't due to somebody taking a left when they essentially shouldn't be. Because I know there would be re required some enforcement with that, similar to what the issue we talked about earlier. Um, but uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Other than that, that's my only question on this. Thank you. I think that, uh, I mean, this is a new thing coming up to me. I think the best option would be almost double the signage. Put some in the parking lot, directing people if they want to reach Pulaski Street to go out through Pound Lane. And then again, and I'm going by a picture that's not the clearest, it's a little bit better here. Putting multiple signs and multiple arrows on the street indicating that they cannot turn left. And then again, it's going to wind up having to be an enforcement issue. Um, but I think a lot of it will be education through, through the signage. Um, and, you know, I'm not sure what businesses are going in there, but if it's offices and stuff like that, well, those employees maybe the first time might do it, the second time they're going to have to be told and hopefully the word spreads that way. Just to go up Officer Hawkins, and you, so you could paint on the road also, right turn only. You can, you can, we, we do have that ability to paint that right on the road? Yeah, I mean, not necessarily right turn only, but arrows, only arrows and stuff like that you would see at multiple different intersections throughout the city. Um, I'm not saying that they always work, as we see on Andover Street by Buttonwood, but it's a start. Um, and the other thing I think that would stop people from wanting to turn left there would also, honestly be the traffic backup. Being right at the set of lights, they wouldn't have much of an opportunity to cut across two lanes of traffic, um, because that's usually, especially during the, the, the busy times, backed up almost to Gardner Street anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so they'd just be sitting there waiting. At some point, they're going to get fed up, hopefully, and just turn right anyways. So, Thank you. Council Turco. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, through you to Attorney Kelty, um, I, I did again. I spoke to Captain Richards about this issue also, and um, the problem I had with it is, I mean, you you basically asked to make a two-way um, on North Central, and I, I would really like to see this written more clearly and actually uh, diagrams given to the council as to where this is going to go and, and which the traffic patterns are going to be, because through conversation with Captain Richards. He said he had discussed with you or your client that um, he wanted right turn only signs at the end of North Central. He wanted the left turn only sign that um, Councilor Melville had mentioned. So there's a lot that, that the police department's already done the work on this, um, but that's not what's presented here to us. And I, I just, I don't have an issue with this at all. I just would like to have it uh, placed so that we don't miss something, um, that we're gonna you know, make a, a traffic change that um, could be misconstrued or unenforceable, as is uh, a lot of the, the uh, former uh, changes made in years past. Um, I do have an issue with withholding this off until coming back to us with um, a, a better defined traffic plan um, through maybe uh, the help with Captain Richards or Sergeant Hawkins in um, maybe in August uh, coming before us again to, to get this passed. Uh, no, I don't have a problem with that, and actually. Um, at one of our meetings, um, we, I made notes about all the uh, signs that should be added. So I'll have them added to the plan with uh, notes and arrows and, and the like. And one of them, uh, also there was going to be a do not enter sign at, at a couple of points. So we'll do that. That'd be fine. Any other councils? Council Gould. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Councilor Turco, great points. Thank you. Uh, one caveat here is that the whole Central Street corridor uh, gets reviewed, and there's a whole new traffic pattern and study going on. It goes all the way up Pulaski Street to Gardner Street. And all of those streets that come off of that, and I'm sure North Central is going to be looked at at least the intersection. Jack, is, are you before us so that you can get permission from us 
to have the two ways so then you can come before us to have the special permit for development of the land? Is special permit for what? No, I won't need a special permit. Okay. I've been to the ZBA. But to your point, um, we, uh, David Terenzoni at Public Services is um, kind of the liaison coordinator with that project you're referring to. And so he felt as though our changes would not be impacted. In fact, the reduction in the number of curb cuts on 114 would be a result that uh, I think that companies call global or something. Yeah, and that they would like to see that. So we've been in touch with, uh, I think the uh, representative is uh, Beneveno, I think is his name. So we don't have so any you, problem coordinating with them. Who's been in touch with Mr. Benevento, you? I was and our traffic people were and actually Dave Terenzoni was. And has, has the discussion been made about making that a two-way and there Mr. Benevento and his team are all in favor of that? I don't, I couldn't go that far, but they looked at the changes with respect to um, the closing of curb cuts and they were very happy with that. So I don't think they're that far along, but. I certainly want this corner to be developed. You know that it, it is an eyesore right now for that whole neighborhood. I don't know how to bring that World Tech team into play here without holding you up. Uh, I'm open to any suggestions from my fellow councilors. Council. Uh, I won't be back until September, so during that time, perhaps I could have that interchange. What, Jack? I'm sorry. I would, I would have that, that uh, discussion, and we try to get Mr. Benevento's group to review. You say you're not back before us in sep till September for another? This committee. This committee. Okay. This committee with my revised plans. Can you, can you, part of this, can you get a memo from Mr. Benevento? I could try well? that. Is that okay, Mr. Chairman? Thank you. Thank you, Attorney. So, Council McGinn. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Not on the committee, but thank you for letting me comment. Um, just through you, Attorney Kelty, you mentioned they're not that far along. Um, World Tech actually is moving forward on the dimensional design here pretty soon. So, so they are, they're further along than, than uh, some might think. So I, I think Councilor Gould's suggestion is really good that, that this be fully coordinated uh, with, with the uh, Central Street project because this is on the, uh, the fringe of the work area. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other members? So my only question, and I don't want to go back to it, I'd like to get the police's, police's input. When you look at these changes and you're, and you're changing the, um, the curb cut, you're closing it off, doesn't it make sense for these changes, and correct me if I'm wrong, Jack, did you say that changes could go in effect before the new buildings are put up? Because to me, it doesn't make any sense at all until after the buildings are done. That's why we're doing this. So I, I don't, I, I would feel comfortable with the changes before the buildings are up, because if you look at the the parking lot, and the, there's there's so much room on the new buildings, but the current building going out to 114, um, there's not a lot of room. I, I'm under the impression that you'd want this after the buildings were demolished, and the new buildings were built up. Does, did the police have any? Um, were you under the impression of anything in particular, Sergeant Hawkins? Uh, we didn't really discuss when it was going to happen. I, I kind of agree with you on the, I wouldn't want to see it happen before the old building was demolished. Once it's an open lot of land, at that point, I wouldn't have an issue because they can, they can move around freely once they get everything out. Um, but obviously when the other building's there, I think you're 100% right, they wouldn't have the, the way to maneuver with the construction equipment to do the work if they, if they removed curb cuts and put new ones in. I think that would just get in the way and create more of a traffic hazard. Right, because Heading west on Andover Street right now, through Wilson Square, towards the shopping center, the new plans show being able to come in and be able to pull out. And that's great with the new buildings because there's plenty of room. But if you look at the current setup right now, to have cars going in and out, and those buildings are so close, even the, the points of them, um, I don't know. To me, it doesn't make any sense to do this until after the new buildings are, are um, 
I, are, I would done. agree completely with that. It would be done somewhat simultaneous with the construction. Okay, that's glad to hear that. And then just to echo Council Turco's, I think these these maps are great, Jack. I don't know if you can get these the before and after with the um, indication of where the um, sign is going to go. And then even if you're going to maybe paint the road a little bit, uh, that would be great too. Any other questions, Councilors? Council Gould. I hate to be a pain. Jack, can you just make sure that the signage that directs traffic coming out onto Pound Lane is appropriate, such as no left turn, uh, uh, right turn only onto Pound Lane, one way, going inbound, not outbound, if you would. I know that's not you, Jack, but that, that, that's your project. I appreciate it. Thank you. No further questions? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you.